Okay, let's continue. Uh, we already know that if we have a proper rational function, it has the horizontal asymptote y equal to zero. So r is a, a proper, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. It's a proper rational function. Then r has the horizontal asymptote y equal to zero, always. Uh, now, if the degree of the numerator is not less than the degree of the denominator, we mentioned it's called improper. The degree of the numerator is not less than the degree of the denominator, not less than, greater than or equal to. In this case, what can we do? R of px over qx. Then we can do long division. We do the division. We divide p by q. We do the division, we will get the quotient and da 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 and the remainder. Okay? So it is equal to fx plus r of x over q of x. It's like if the uh, you have a big numerator, small denominator, you do the division, you will get the quotient plus the remainder over n. So we do the similar thing for the integers. Okay? And we know that after you do this division, this remainder has a degree smaller than the degree of the quotient, uh, degree of the denominator. Okay, so this part is proper. Okay, so what do we say? We say an improper rational function is a polynomial. This is a polynomial. An improper rational function is a polynomial function plus a proper rational function. Okay? Improper is polynomial plus proper by the long division. And end behavior, remember we're talking about end behavior. and behavior. At infinity, proper rational function has horizontal sum total zero, means proper rational function approaches zero. So the improper rational function is more or less is more or less like the polynomial function like this polynomial function, okay? So because this, uh, this part approaches zero, it disappears. Okay, so if, if this quotient fx is a number, a fixed number, a fixed number, then the line y equal to b is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, this is the first case. And the second case, if fx is ax plus b, and here a is not equal to zero. Then this line y equal to ax plus b is an oblique asymptote. Okay. 
in other cases, in other cases, the graph of R will approach the graph of R will approach the graph of a of F and there's no horizontal or oblique asymptote horizontal oblique asymptote okay so that's uh, the uh, three situations so you get a number horizontal you get a linear function oblique you get other function, no horizontal, no oblique, but the graph will approach the graph of this polynomial function. The polynomial has what graph? Then this, uh, uh, this rational function will have that graph. Okay? Okay, let's try to do the example. So find the horizontal or oblique asymptote. The rational function is a 3x to 4 minus x squared over x cubed minus x squared plus 1. We're trying to find the horizontal or oblique asymptote. So in order to do that, we have to find that quotient. So we do the long division. We divide the numerator by the denominator. The numerator has degree 4. It does not have x cubed or x or constant terms. So you have to put x cubed, x and constant terms in order to do the long division. The, this part is uh, x cubed minus x squared and plus 1, the denominator. Okay, you divide the leading term by leading term. You divide 3x to 4 by x cubed. You get x, uh, 3x. 3x. And then you do multiplication term by term. You have 3x to 4 minus 3x cubed. There's no x, so there's 0 term. And plus 3x. Okay, so first you do the leading term, the division between leading terms. You get this term, and then you do the product term by term. And the first term cancel. This is a subtraction. This line minus this line. So 3x, uh, 3x to 4 minus 3x to 4 is 0. 0 minus 3 is a 3. Negative minus 0 is negative. 0 minus 3, negative 3. Okay? And you drop this uh, 0 here. And again, you divide leading term by leading term. So you get 3 here. You do the product. You get 3x cubed minus 3x squared and 0 and plus 3. Okay, again, I do subtraction. Here is 0. Negative 1 minus negative 3 is positive 2. Negative 3x minus 0. 0 minus 3, negative 3. So after long division, you get a quotient, quotient, put it here, that's a polynomial, and plus a proper rational function. What is a proper rational function? The remainder over the original denominator. OK? And since here you have ax plus b, so y equal to 3x plus 3 is the oblique asymptote. Oblique asymptote. So that is the way to find oblique asymptote. Okay. Okay. So if 
Here you get a constant, it's a horizontal. You get a linear, it's oblique. If you get any others, it's a, uh, it does not have horizontal oblique. So th here is the rule. The difference degree degree of p is equal to degree of q. We're talking about the numerator and the denominator. If they have the same, if they have the same degree, they will have horizontal. Asymptote. If the degree numerator minus the degree of the denominator is equal to one, you will have oblique asymptote. If the degree of the numerator minus the degree of the denominator is greater than or equal to two, more than two, no horizontal or oblique asymptote. Okay, so here you see here, this is degree four, degree three, the difference is one, so you do have an oblique asymptote. The whole computation, what is the oblique asymptote? It depends on this long division. Okay, so just do the long division correctly, you will get the uh, correct asymptote. Okay, so this is the section 5.2, the properties of the rational functions. In this section, we define the rational functions, we have the domain of rational functions, we have the lowest terms, and then we have asymptotes, vertical, horizontal. The vertical asymptote depend on the, the lowest terms. And the horizontal asymptote, one is for the proper, the other one is for improper. Proper, very simple, zero, y equal to zero. Improper, you have to do this long division. For the long division part, you will have a non-zero horizontal asymptote, sorry, you will have horizontal asymptote, oblique asymptote, and no horizontal oblique asymptote. So three situations. Just try to do the exercise, understand the steps, okay? So now let's do the uh, section 5.3, the graph of rational functions. So we're going to graph some rational functions. Okay, so in this section, we will have some example. Just see the example. Understand and memorize the steps. Okay, so we start from we start from this uh, rational function x minus one over x squared minus four. Okay, so first. You have to determine the domain. The domain, in order to determine the domain, you need to factor the denominator. So you factor the denominator. X squared minus four. Remember, X squared minus four is X squared minus two squared. So it's X minus two times X plus two. Okay, so the domain of R is the set of all real numbers except 2 and minus 2. And also you see here it is already in the lowest terms. So step 2, R is in lowest term. Low terms. If you don't, if the original expression is not in lowest term, you just cancel the corresponding term and get a 
lost it. Uh, be careful. To describe the domain, you cannot cancel anything. Even though maybe the numerator and the, de the denominator have the common factor, but in order to determine the domain, you don't do the cancellation. To find the lowest term, you can do the cancellation. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the important stuff. Okay, so step three, we are going to find asymptotes. Okay, the asymptotes is the following. Function is, def oh, sorry, not, not, it's my bad. X is not one, X is not two. Uh, function is defined as a zero, so the Y asymptote, uh, Y intercept, Y intercept, Y intercept is R of zero. When X is zero, you find the, uh, the value. When X is zero, it's negative one over negative four, it's one over four. Y intercept, is negative 4. And then the x-intercept. x-intercepts as a solution r of 0, r of x equal to 0. In other words, it's a solution of a numerate is equal to 0. Okay, x-intercept is a solution numerate equal to 0. So you have only one x-intercept. y-intercept, 1 over 4. x-intercept, 1. Okay. And once you get x-intercept, you're going to apply the behavior near zero study. So behavior near intercept, it's zero, it's also intercept, behavior near x intercept. So near, z near one, there's only one uh, x intercept, near x equal to one. What is this function? This function, let's check. R of x is, whenever you see this one, one comes from x minus one, this term is kept. Other terms, you see when x is one, more or less, approximately. When x is one, one minus two is negative one. One plus two is three. So the behavior near intercept study tells us when x, when x is close to one, the r of x is more or less like this linear function, negative one over three times x minus one. Okay, so this is a intercepts and the behavior near x intercepts. Okay, and step four, vertical asymptote. You see here, in the lowest term, the zero of the denominator provide the vertical asymptote. So we already have lowest term, so x equal to two x equal to negative 2 are vertical asymptotes. So this rational function has two vertical asymptotes. Okay, and then we check the horizontal asymptote or oblique asymptote. Okay, this is a a proper rational function. R of x is a proper. For whatever proper fun uh, uh, rational function, it only has horizontal asymptote y equal to zero. Horizontal asymptote y is equal to zero. Okay, and, and then we want to see if this, uh, you see here, remember that we mentioned that horizontal or oblique asymptote, the graph of the function can intersect. So we want to know if the, 
if we want to know if the graph intersects the horizontal asymptote. or not. We want to know this. How do we know that? We just set it equal to the horizontal asymptote. So you set r of x is equal to this value. So if the horizontal asymptote is y equal to 10, you just set r of x equal to 10. If the horizontal asymptote is, uh, is 0, you just set r of x equal to 0. r of x is x minus 1 x squared minus 4 equal to 0. A rational function is zero if and only if the numerator is zero. So x equal to one. So only at x equal to one, the horizontal asymptote and the graph of R intersect. They intersect at x equal to 1. OK, and then we try to sketch. In order to get a proper sketch, we label all zeros of the numerate and the denominator. The numerator and denominator and divide the interval, the x-axis, into sub-intervals. Okay, so let's try to uh, study it. Okay, so. So we have a, a x equal to negative 2, x equal to positive 2. This is the one thing. And when x is equal to 1, remember that we have a lot of uh, uh, computation already. When x is equal to 1, that is a uh, x intercept. y intercept is 1 over 4, so this is x equal to 1. y intercept is a uh, 1 over 4, so this is 1 over 4. And we know that near x equal to 1, it looks like, remember here, near x equal to 1, it looks like negative 1 over 3, x minus 1. So it's, it's like this. Okay? Okay. And, and then what do we do? We are going to, you see here, we only know some, know this limited stuff. You already have, you already have uh, uh, the left part and right part and this x-intercept and y-intercept. We need the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote to either go to positive or go to negative or go that way or this way. So we have to study, we have to study the sun of the function over each different sub-intervals. So that is a reason because we only have this limited information. Okay, ah, and by the way, the y equal to zero is horizontal asymptote because uh, it coincides with the uh, x-axis, so we cannot label it more clear. Okay, so we have this uh, negative two, one, this is one, and the positive two, so we go to negative infinity to negative 2. It's a one interval. Negative 2 to 1, another interval. 1 to 2, this interval. And the 2 to infinity, the, third in, uh, the, the fourth interval. Okay? So over those four intervals, let's study the graph. So graph is x minus 1 
of uh, the function is x minus 1 over x squared minus 4. So you pick up sample point over this interval, you can pick up the sample point, for example, negative 3. The sample point, we always pick up sample point. Here, from negative 2 and 1, we, we can pick up 0. 0 is already selected. And from 1 to 2, you can pick up uh, like 1 and a half. From 2 to infinity, you can pick up 3. Just whatever. It's just a some simple uh, sample point that you, you, you have in your mind. And you do the evaluation at negative 3. You check the value. So it's a negative 3 minus 1, negative 4. 3 squared is a 9. 9 minus 4 is a 5. Okay, at a zero, at a zero, we just did the computation. It's one over four. At three halves, this is a three halves. You try the computation. It is a negative two over seven. And at a three, you have a uh, what is at a three? At a three, you have a two over uh, five. It's a two over five. Okay, and uh, okay. So those are the values. So we can label them uh, two over 5 is point, uh, point 0.2, so at the 3, it's also, it's like this place. And uh, one, 1 and a half is negative, so it's, it's this place. Okay, and uh, uh, negative 3, negative 3 is a negative 4 over 5, so it's uh, more or less like, like this place. It's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, so we will try. If you want, you can have more plot. Have more plot, and uh, remember that horizontal sum total means that eventually this will approach. It will approach the uh, horizontal asymptote uh, y equal to zero, and and the point is here when x approaches a negative infinity, the graph will also approach zero. So it's like this. Uh, y why we cannot cross the x-axis? Because we just did the computation. We know that this is a unique point, unique intersection point between the horizontal asymptote and the graph. So if you start from here, you cannot draw your graph higher than the x-axis. If you do that, you will cross it. But in our study, we cannot cross it this place. So, so we will have something like and something like this. Okay, and, and then we talk about the vertical asymptote. You see here, it's already here. You want it to go to infinity or negative infinity, so you cannot let it go up. If you let it go up, you cross the x-axis, so it has to go down. In this place, you cannot let it go down, you have to let it go up. And remember, it's a smooth. So you, you, you don't have a lot of choices, okay? And here, you see, it already go, it already touched this point, so it will go down. In this place, you will connect this uh, uh, one over four. If you want, you can add more, one more test point, negative one here. You check what is the value at negative one. What is the value at negative one? Let's see. Uh, R of a negative one is negative one minus one, negative one squared minus four. So that's negative two over negative three is two thirds. So it's here, negative one. It's two thirds here. So you're going to connect it this way. You connect it this way, and remember, it will approach infinity, so it can only approach infinity. You cannot let it go down. If it go down, it will cross the horizontal zone. So that's uh, uh, the simplest connecting, and uh, that's uh, the graph sketch. Okay. So don't say, uh, don't make the uh, the weird turn or stuff. The graph is smooth. There's no weird turn. There's no like sharp turn or a sharp corner or unreasonable uh, turning, okay?
So that's our, uh, our first example. Of course, this is a, a very, uh, very uh, rough sketch. Let's try more and get the understanding. Okay, so we will more or less have the similar uh, steps. So you see here, in certain moment, we need some evaluation. Okay, we have this rational function, the second rational function. The second rational function. Okay, so first step, step one, what did we do? Step one, we factor it and we find the domain. X squared minus one, one is one squared, so it's X minus one, X plus one. So the domain is the set of all real numbers except X equal to zero. Zero is a solution of a there is a solution of a denominator. Okay, so that's uh, the domain. After we have domain, we, we see that this is the lowest form. R is in lowest form. Term, form, term. R is in lowest terms. And step three, we're talking about the intercepts. Intercept, why intercept? Y intercept R of zero, but R is not defined at zero. No. No Y intercept. There's no Y intercept. X intercept. X intercepts are the solution of the numerator. So there are two X intercept x equal to 1, x equal to negative 1. Okay, 2 x intercept. And then we study the, the behavior near the x intercept. So, near x equal to 1. Near x equal to 1, let's check. X equal to 1 comes from X minus 1, so X minus 1 is kept approximately. X minus 1 is kept. X plus 1 is 2. Over X, X is 1. So it's approximately by 2 times X minus 1. Okay, it's a near behavior. And the near X equal to negative 1. Near X equal to negative 1 negative 1 comes from x plus 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Over x, x is negative 1. So it's 2 times x plus 1. 2 times x plus 1. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the near behavior. The behavior near 0, near x-intercept. Okay, so next we are going to find the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote. Is x equal to zero. This is a lowest term. So x the denominator equal to zero will give us a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote is x equal to 0. And this function, this rational function is not proper, it's improper. Unfortunately, the difference of the degree is a, is a 1, so it has oblique asymptote. So how do we do that? We divide x squared plus 0x minus 1 by x. So squared 0 
and minus 1. It's just a negative 1. So it is r over x is, is what? Is x minus 1 over x. So this is a, a proper rational function. And this is a linear function. So y equal to x is the oblique asymptote. Has an oblique asymptote. Okay, and the step seven. We want to set up the uh, the equation so that if uh, we want to determine, we want to see or determine, we want to see that if. Uh, if the graph of R intersects the oblique asymptote. So why do we always study this? Because if you see that it does not have intercept, then if the one point is on one side, the whole graph will be always on that side. Okay, see here, this is a unique uh, intersection point between the graph and the asymptote. Then for, for this part, the point is here, then the, the graph cannot cross the horizontal asymptote. So that's a reason we always want to know if the graph intersect asymptote or not. Okay? Okay, so the, what is a function? Function is a x squared minus x of uh, x squared minus one over x. The oblique asymptote, oblique asymptote y is equal to x. You set up this equation. You try to solve the solution. Well, you move this x to the left side, uh, right side. You will get negative one equal to zero. No solution. No solution means the graph. The graph of R does not intersect the oblique asymptote. So it does not intersect oblique asymptote. Okay, and then we are going to label all the zeros of the numerator under the denominator. The numerator has the numerator is x minus one, x plus one. So the zeros of the numerate and the denominate denominate the zero of the numerate and the denominate denominate me, 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 ah, denominate are one negative one and a zero. So one negative one and a zero. So we have several subintervals. What are the subintervals? Negative infinity to negative one. Negative one zero one, and negative one to zero, one to zero. Uh, uh, sorry, negative one to zero, zero to one, and one to infinity. Okay, so that's a uh, the subinterval. You have the and up to this step. We don't know if we need additional plot or not. I have no idea. So let's just collect what we already know. Let's just collect what we already know. OK, so negative 1, positive 1. They are the x-intercepts. And at negative 1, 
it is uh, the near be the behavior near active one is two times x minus one. At the pos uh, at positive one is two times uh, two times x minus one. At the negative one is uh, two times x plus one. So that either way, they are this way. It's uh, uh, the slope. This number two means uh, the direction is here. Direction is this way. And uh, vertical sum total. This is a vertical sum total. X equal to zero. It's a y-axis, but the equation is x equal to 0. The oblique asymptote, y equal to x, y equal to x. There is no, mm, no y-intercept. x-intercept is here. OK, so what is a graph? We don't have a lot of information. Now let's try to determine. Uh, try to get some more points. So, for example, between between negative infinity and negative one, let's pick up negative two. For example, negative negative two. So, at negative two, what is uh, r of negative two? R of negative two is negative three over two. Just just use the formula. Where's the formula? is here. R of x is x squared minus 1 over x. So it's a 4 minus 1. Am I right? I Yes. 4 minus 1 is a negative, uh, is a 3, but over negative 2 is negative uh, 3 halves. Okay? So this is a negative 3 halves. It's possibly here. This one, this place. Okay. One point is here. And between negative one and uh, zero, let's choose negative one half. So we compute R of a negative one half. What is the value? The value is the three halves. Just put it here. We get three halves. Three halves. One half. Three halves. Well, it's very high. It's here. Okay. This is a point. This is just uh, uh, the test point. This, this is a point on the graph. And between 0 and x, between 0 and x, let's pick up 1 half. So 1 half, we compute the, the value of 1 half. What is a 1 half? 1 half, is, you get the value of negative 3 halves. You put 1 half here, it's 1 over 4 minus 1 over 1, 1 half. You get the negative 3 halves. It's, it's possibly this place. And then, greater than one. Greater than one, you can choose two. We choose two. R over two. R over two is a three halves. R over two is a, it's again this place. Three halves. Right. So that's a, uh, the estimation. Uh, the 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 sample point. Now let's try to connect them. This point here. Remember, this is a vertical sum total. Vertical sum total means it will approach infinity or negative infinity. Either positive or negative. But you can see that whenever you turn it down, you will intersect this oblique asymptote. We cannot intersect oblique asymptote. No intersection. So you will smoothly connect them. And this part, remember you have oblique asymptote. So when you connect it and extend it, it will be very close to this oblique asymptote. Okay, so that's the reason this part, you will try to sketch the graph close to the y-axis. This part, you will try to sketch the graph close to the oblique asymptote. And similarly, when you have this point, you connect them, and extend it, you will uh, draw the graph close to y-axis because this is a vertical asymptote. No way to turn back. And when you connect these two points, you will extend it and let it approach to this oblique asymptote, but not cross it, oblique asymptote. And this is the graph. This is a graph. You can see that if we already have sufficiently many information, we don't need this evaluation, the sample point. If we don't have sufficiently many information, we possibly will evaluate the function at several simple sample points and try to see the, the tendency. Okay? So 
So that is uh, uh, the example. So let me see. Okay, let's see the next one. Next, we have this uh, uh, rational function, x to 4 plus 1 of x squared. Step 1, it is already factored. You cannot factor x to 4 plus, uh, plus 1. There's no real solution, real uh, factorization. x squared is already factored. So it is factored, and the domain is the set of all real numbers except x equal to 0. When x is 0, the denominator becomes 0. Because you cannot factor it, so it is in lowest, lowest terms. It's already in the lowest terms. And OK, and then we can get the, uh, the x-intercept, y-intercept y-intercept r0 undefined so no y-intercept is always an evaluation at 0 but here this 0 is not in the domain so there's no y-intercept x-intercept x-intercept the numerator equal to 0 you will get x to 4 equal to negative 1 even power it can never be negative one so no so no x intercept no y intercept okay step four vertical asymptote vertical asymptote this is already in the lowest term so the vertical asymptote is x equal to zero you find the the zero of the denominator, you will have vertical asymptote. Okay, and step five horizontal or oblique asymptote. Then you have to do the long division. You do the long division, you will get it is equal to x squared plus 1 over x squared. You just do division x to 4 over x squared plus 1 over x squared. In, unfortunately, this is not a constant number. This is not a linear function. So it has no horizontal or oblique asymptote. There's no. It does, not, it does not have a horizontal or oblique asymptote, but r of x and x squared have similar graph as x approaches negative infinity or x approaches positive infinity. So it tells us even though we don't have a line horizontal or oblique asymptote, but we know that when x approaches negative or positive infinity, this term is almost zero. So we can just use x squared to approximate the graph of r of x. Okay? And next, we collect the zeros of the numerate. Numerate under the denominator denominator the numerator has no zero denominator has one zero so just one one zero divide the number line into two part negative infinity to zero negative infinity to zero or zero to positive infinity okay just two parts 
And because there's no horizontal oblique asymptote, so we don't have to study the intersection between the graph and those asymptotes. Okay, now let's let's try to let's try to label them. So x equal to zero, y asymptote, no horizontal asymptote, only zero this part is undefined. We have two limited information. Okay, now, but we, we know that the graph of R is very close to the graph of X squared. So, so what is X squared? X squared is like this. Okay, X squared is like this. Okay, now let's check. Uh, negative infinity to zero. So let's, for example, pick up negative 1. When we get a negative 1, we check r of negative 1. r of negative 1 is equal to what? Negative 1 to 4 is 1, plus 1 is 2, over 1 is equal to 2. Here, r is equal to 1. You check that the value is also 2, so you have a point here and a point here. Uh, well, let's see. When it approaches this part, it will approach to the y equal to x squared. When it approaches to approaches to this uh, vertical sum total, remember you have vertical sum total, so it will be like this. Okay, so just make it smooth because the graph of rational function is also smooth. And this part we do the same thing. You cannot get it down. The reason is that you see here, this is uh, like the boundary. If you want the graph cross this, basically it means you're going to solve. If you want, like for example, why the graph is not this way? If the graph is this way, it will cross the, uh, this uh, y equal to x squared. You, are, you will solve r is equal to x squared. The intersection, uh, r. This is r. Equal to x squared. You cancel x squared, x squared. You get a one over x squared is equal to zero. No solution. No solution. No solution means you have the point here. You cannot draw your your your, your graph this way to approach negative infinity. You cannot let it approach negative infinity. You will let it approach positive infinity. And in this process, you will not bother to draw some weird curve. Just use smooth curve to, to demonstrate. And this part is the same thing. So the graph is like the left branch and the right branch. OK? So whenever you want to cross, you want to cross some dotted line, you will set the original rational function equal to the equation of the dotted line. See if you can find a solution. If there is solution, that is possible. If there's no solution, that is impossible. Okay? There's impossible to, to let the graph cross this dotted line. Okay? So this is uh, the example uh, in this section. So we will have those uh, three examples and you try to do some exercise by yourself and s compare it with uh, uh, with a given solution see if you understand the whole process we basically uh, have some fixed step we determine the domain we determine the lowest term x intercept y intercept vertical sum total horizontal sum total oblique sum total and see if the horizontal oblique asymptote intersect the uh, the graph or not. And then you, we will have the zeros of the numerator and denominator. You will have several uh, several sub-intervals. You connect the, you, you, you label all the information you know on the graph and see if you can draw the, the curve or not. If you cannot, pick up sample point and uh, those sample points will help you to, to draw the graph, right? So that's uh, the steps. So the, uh, let me check the,
the yeah the summary of the graph of rational functions is on page summary of graph of rational function on page 355 on 355 you check that uh, it contains several steps, a lot, a lot of steps. You may not memorize the order of the steps correctly, but you have to understand what you know, or what, what, what they ask you to do. So domain, intercepts, lowest form, lowest term, the vertical sum told, horizontal sum told, cross them or not, like the uh, intersection, and then you have the uh, the behavior study near the intercept and plus the sample point. Sample point, you don't know how many you need or you don't, you don't even know if you need it or not. But once you th feel you, you need more point, you just apply the sample point. Otherwise, you don't have to uh, insert the sample point computation in the step. It's just a supporting role, it's not the determining role, okay? Okay, very good. Uh, we finish this section and we will uh, start a new section next time. Thank you.